Hello, my name is Josh Hauser and welcome to my presentation on image interpolation software for my TEM 194 Intro to Tech Development course. First a little bit about my venture. My venture allows for people to create photo books from, from pictures on their computer. Um, but one of the biggest things that I want to allow people to do is uh, create a way for them to import their pictures from uh, different social networks like um, Twitter, Facebook is a big one, um, Instagram, um, Photo Bucket, um, different media sharing places like that, and also websites like Flickr. Um, and really, I want to have my venture be able to import pictures from anywhere and everywhere, um, every type of different website that's out there that you know media is stored on. Um, really any place with an application programming interface um, so that you know there's an easy way to do it or APIs as they're called. Uh, the problem with importing images from a lot of different um, you know websites such as Facebook and uh, photo book photo bucket and Twitter is that when an image is uploaded from a PC or a camera um, or laptop or anything to the internet it's usually scaled down quite a bit um, to help the web pages load faster. Um, that's great for the owners of the websites but bad for this specific venture um, because they, they are scaled down to 72 dpi or dots per inch and in order to make a picture look um, good enough for printing it has to be usually around 150 dpi and um, 300 dpi is ideal but that's just not really something that is possible once it's been scaled down. In my research the only way that I found um, that quality of images can be increased from 72 dpi um, or in other words made larger or more printable is by using a technique that's called interpolation. Interpolation basically invents new pixels and new parts of images by taking averages of other pixels from um, around where the new made up one or invented one will be. Um, in the case of most images, this means that thousands of new pixels will be made or invented um, in an image that's a, cup, a few inches wide by a few inches wide, uh, tall. Okay, now for an overview of the technology. There are two different types of interpolation, mathematical and algorithmic. The difference is that mathematical uses simple mathematical formulas to make images bigger or smaller. Algorithmic uses more I'm sorry, algorithmic uses more complex and usually proprietary formulas and other techniques to make the converted image look better than just simply doing it with math. Think of it as more advanced software. Um, a good way to think about it is uh, if you think about the original Pac-Man versus the newest Pac-Man games um, or the newest Pac-Man character, they both really do the same thing. They eat dots, defeat ghosts, and do the other things that Pac-Man would do. One just looks better and does the job a little better um, with a little bit more features than the other one. That's how propri proprietary software works when it comes to interpolating, interpolating as well. Um, it just does a better job at it. Now let's look a little bit deeper into each um, method uh, to understand each one a little bit better. In mathematical interpolation, um, it uses color averages of the different pixels around the pixel that is to be made up or invented out of thin air. Um, there are very specific mathematical formulas that are used. There are um, a variety of different ways to do this and they all have different names such as nearest neighbor, bilinear, bicubic, bicubic smoother, and bicubic sharper. These mathematical methods can be made more and more complex by changing the formula slightly to include pixels that are further away than the pixel that is to be invented, um, and by weighting them or adjusting their influence accordingly. Algorithmic interpolation, on the other hand, um, uses software that gets a little bit more complex, because in addition to the math that would happen with mathematical interpolation, there are also some things that go on behind the scenes to make it even a little bit better, um, such as the software automatically smoothing edges that it detects and reducing artifacts that get, creating, that get created when resizing or improving images mathematically. 
there's always going to be a trade-off with interpolation. Um, it's impossible to create pixels that are um, kind of missing from there to be made to look exactly like it. So with interpolation, um, the image that results usually ends up being softer. Um, and but opposed to no um, interpolation or you know any kind of method to make the image look better at all when it goes to print. Um, it's much better um, because without interpolation, the image would appear very pixelated um, and have you know square dots everywhere. Um, and I think, and a lot of people seem to think that smoother is better than having jagged lines. Now for the current trends in the technology, um, interpolation software has become more and more advanced over recent years. When it comes to interpolation, there is a demand for it from amateur and professional photographers and printers. Since this niche demand exists, um, good software exists and is sold. There are three major off-the-shelf ones that I considered and downloaded to see the results of them while doing this research. They are PhotoZoom, Genuine Fractals, and SmartEdge. And this slide is the results with um, all three of those different software programs, um, PhotoZoom, Genuine Fractals and Smart Edge. Smart Edge is the best that I've tested so far, but it isn't quite good enough. I'd like to do something a little bit better for my venture. Um, so I will be developing a new algorithm to perform the image enhancing and interpolating. Okay, different uses of the technology. Um, interpolation, first of all, was talked about and more popular um, when mass market digital cameras were only capable of one to three megapixels. Um, and people needed to print out um, 8 by 10 inch pictures, for example, to put it in a frame. At the time, interpolation was the only method that could make a 1 to 3 megapixel image printable at these larger sizes. Um, but now most digital cameras are 5 to 10 megapixels, so this isn't really a concern for most people anymore. Right now, the biggest use for image interpolation is for uh, making very large prints, such as banners or in images that need to be at least 24 inches wide. Several factors can be um, made when interpolating an image, um, such as making adjust adjustments concerning the average distance from which the print or image will be viewed from. In the case of large banners, the interpolation is set up to make it ideal from viewing from about 10 to 20 feet away, so that if someone is 100 feet away, they'll be able to depict what is in the image, basically, um, and any words it, it might have on it. But when they are 20 feet away, that's more ideal, and if they were to be one foot away, the image would become out of focus, um, but by this point, the banner has usually done its job. Uh, it's already been seen, read, and it's brought the person closer if they're only a foot away. Interpolation technologies and software can also be used for video game emulation as long as the equipment running um, it is power enough, powerful enough to do real-time interpolation and smoothing. Video game emulators are programs that usually run on some of the newest phones, tablets, or computers that allow for much older games, sometimes as much as 20 plus years old, to be run on and played on new devices that they were never designed originally to run on. It's due to the technology and resolution gap that interpolation software must be used as a bridging software. Older video games such as Super Mario Bros. for the Nintendo Entertainment System um, had very low graphic resolution, much lower than on the new smartphones and tablets. For example, the iPhone has the Retina display, which most people have heard of. And in order for the software to look good on one of the newest phones, um, it has to be designed from the ground up to display, display properly and function with the retina display. The same holds true for much older video games that people still enjoy and want to play on their newer hardware and smartphones. If interpolation was not used on video games, they would look very bad when played on the phone. Um, and here you can see um, how much better interpolation can make an image or a video game look. Um, by using the interpolation software. Interpolation technology is also used for up-resing um, video on high-definition TVs that old shows, for example, The Cosby Show or Fresh Prince of Bel-Air um, were when they came out. Um, basically, you know, sometimes these shows get sent to um, newer TVs that are HD only and without interpolation or, um, you know, some, sorry, without interpolation, um, 
you know, the image would look extremely pixelated. Okay, now for an overview of the technology specific development process. Um, this technology is in a relatively mature state that is commercialized and available to the public through the purchase of um, through purchase and even some free programs and open source solutions. Um, anybody with proper knowledge can develop this technology and make it better um, as long as they have the proper skill set as we intend to do by coming up with their own proprietary algorithm. But in order to develop an algorithm one must first identify the problem. In this case the problem is that the images that are downloaded from the internet are not suitable uh, for printing due to pixelation and low image resolution without some, si some type of improvement to the image. Um, if some type of improvement and upraising to the image isn't done pri prior to printing it, the customers will not be happy with their photo book, um, so we must develop a software that will, will interpolate better than any of the existing software programs available. Two approaches can be um, made when uh, developing this algorithm. First, we're going to look at all the previous open source um, interpolation software techniques and build what, off of what others have already done. Um, and then we're also going to think about and brainstorm um, what if anything was possible um, to kind of you know, not limit ourselves um, to the status quo and just really think about you know, thinking outside the box and thinking about how we can make this happen. Um, once a path is developed, we'll use the Scrum software development process. Um, because in my experience, the Scrum process works much better than a traditional waterfall design methodology, and the results are usually better at the end, and it's faster to make, uh, to make new software. Now, finally, a suggested approach to the focus area, um, including the prerequisites. We will learn everything that we can about the technology, including looking under the hood of all open source interpolation software, such as Creed, Interpol I'm sorry, Interpolate, and JX2. Um, by re reverse engineering what other people and companies have taken the time to figure out how to do, we will be able to save a lot of time and money. Um, taking this approach is not always possible, um, but due to open source being so prevalent, and there being already specialized interpolation software developed that is open source, we can take advantage of this, so we're definitely going to. Um, also, in order to develop the software, um, we'll have to have software programs, which we're lucky enough to have. Um, so now, thanks to this assignment and putting together this presentation and thinking through everything, I know exactly what we must do in order to um, you know, bring our product to the next step and this assignment has definitely been very valuable. Thank you for your time.